Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jasmine. So today I've got another Planet Zoo video for you guys and I'm really, really excited because this is the first Planet Zoo video I've made in a really long time. If you watched my most recent Sims builds, I explained where I've been, but I basically had a little bit of a break from YouTube. I just needed a little bit of a rest. But yeah, this is my first Planet Zoo build since I've returned and I was really, really excited to play with the new DLC pack that we got because obviously I wasn't posting when that came out. So I was really, really upset to have missed that on YouTube whilst it was still fresh. So I wanted to make sure that I built something using the new pack. And so this is actually not one of my sandbox mode zoos that I've started and it won't be a new sandbox mode zoo either. It's just just like a one-off enclosure that I built for this new Southeast Asian pack because most of those animals are tropical I think and I chose I wanted to do the clouded leopards because I didn't have any big cats currently on my channel and I really really wanted to build for a big cat and they're usually the most popular animals I think aren't they too at least for me I like watching big cat habitats being built and so yeah this habitat is for a clouded leopard which they are so cute I absolutely love them and um, they're a little bit glitchy in in the pack in the animations I think when they like jump they're a little bit um, sort of slow motiony which looks a bit weird so I, I think they might be aware of that so hopefully they're fixing it but yeah <laughs> I just kind of had to ignore that when I was taking videos at the end of little animations but yeah also before I get too far into this video sorry in advance because I've got a really bad cold at the minute so if I sound really nasally and croaky that's why so <laughs> sorry about that but yeah it's just going it's just the end of it it sounds much much worse than it is. It's not COVID or anything like that, it is just a cold. In terms of my building inspiration then, I was really really inspired by, I think it's called the Singapore Gardens or the tree sculptures that are in the Singapore Gardens and I don't know if you're familiar with them, they kind of look like these like wooden shelter climbing objects. If you take away like the walkway that I've added around it, it's just that sort of vertical tree sculpture but they're slightly more intricate like in design than these ones that I've made so they look like the branches at the top of the sculpture are slightly more jaggedy they're still quite sleek and modern um, and I tried to replicate them originally like yeah more like the original sculptures themselves but it just didn't look quite right I think because I had to you know reduce the size of the climbing structures because of the size of the clouded leopards themselves and just like the width of the logs looked a bit clunky with the design but you will see if you go back to the start of the video that you can see the original design a little bit in the start of the video just in the corner of the footage like you just get a little bit of a glimpse and I did create a blueprint for both the sculptures that I use and the original version of the sculptures in case you were interested in putting them into your game if you like the look of them there so yeah that I will link the blueprints or all of the blueprints for this video because I also created one for the entire habitat as well so I'll link them all in the video description down below in case you're interested I don't think I include like the walkway structure in my blueprint for the shelters the shelter blueprint is basically just the three vertical objects before I then add the walkway so sorry about that I didn't include that but yeah I do include obviously the shelters that are in the entire enclosure blueprint so if you want them they'll be in there. I'm not 100% happy with the scale of this habitat. I, I, I'm not sure but I feel like the clouded leopards might be a smaller big cat than say you know maybe one of the tigers or the lions or something like that. Obviously they're a little bit bigger. I'm not sure how much bigger they are or whether or not it would make a difference whether they would look like more suited to this kind of enclosure. Maybe this enclosure would suit maybe a Bengal tiger or something like that because I feel like they they live in tropical Asian regions too so that would kind of suit the biome that I've used in the area. But yeah the, the leopards just looked a bit tiny when they were walking around the enclosure and I guess that's nice for them because they've got like a nice big space to enjoy and also I use a whole lot of rocks which reduce their traversable area as well so that's probably it probably ended up being like the right size for them but I know before I started adding all the rocks it was basically like double the traversable area that they needed so 
so yeah it was quite a big space for that size of animal so sorry about that if you think the proportion is not quite right and as I said this was also the first time building in Planet Zoo for a little while probably like several months and for the most part I remembered you know all of the hotkeys and stuff quite well but I did forget where a few of the objects were or the few of the off-grid objects that I use quite a lot in particular where they were so you will see that I created like the main outline and roof of this sort of viewing area for the guests I used mainly gridded objects until I got to like the windows and the doors and then the interior and then I managed to find I think it was like this plaster off-grid object that I was looking for and I would have used that for like like the bottom section and the roof section as well if I'd found it at the time but I didn't so most of the structure is actually really quite disorganized in how it's grouped together it's like quite separated there's loads of different groups with individual pieces so that's annoying so I'm sorry about that but it does look okay it is quite neat I've hidden it well <laughs> um, yeah it's just annoying how it's grouped yeah and you'll notice also that there's a little bit of an overlap with the glass and like that like bottom bit of um, concrete like below the glass section they kind of overlap a bit at the corners of each section so yeah I think if I had the off-grid pieces there then I would have been able to make it a lot more neater and it would have just looked that little bit nicer but it doesn't look too bad I'm quite happy with how it turned out anyway it wasn't bad enough that I had to go back and <laughs> redo everything that I'd done so I hope you don't mind but I've made sure that I favorited those objects now those off-grid pieces because yeah I was like not risking not finding them in the future again I'm still kind of working out different pieces and how to use the pieces for different things Planet Zoo is one of those games where like you have to know, you have to be really, really familiar with all the different pieces and how you can use them and pick up like little tips and tricks from other builders. Like I've learned so much from just watching other people build, like some of my favorite builders. I think at the minute, Simply Savannah is my favorite Planet Zoo content creator. She's She's got quite a contemporary style of building. Quite a lot of her builds are quite contemporary but yeah I think they're really really good really really polished and she uses quite a few of the same tricks that I've done in this build um, in terms of for example you'll see in a minute I do in the interior of that viewing building I create like a little education board and she uses the same objects that I did for the like the lines which I guess sort of represent writing or information about the animals and so I use the same it's a recolorable object as well so it's quite good for text on boards like that so that was quite handy and I also merged together quite a lot of the mossy rocks with the I think they're the recolorable rocks that came with the aquatic pack they're kind of like the the fake rocks the fake zoo rocks you know what I mean that every zoo has um, and I merged them together and that I think was inspired by the lady designer and I've been watching her videos since Planet Zoo came out basically so I'm a long-term fan of hers and she also does a similar thing where she puts the I can't remember what kind of trees they are but the trees with the orange blossoms on them they're like a tropical tree and she like lowers them down into the ground and turns them into bushes she's done that quite a few of her builds so yeah that's where I got that trick from as well and I was quite happy with how the front viewing platform turned out because originally I thought that that the leopards would be able to sort of jump up to that area and so I'd have to put whatever fence was there or barrier that would be there make that quite high but luckily they weren't a actually able to go anywhere near any of that section of pathway that sort of curves around the front of the bills and the only reason why I put barriers around the two sides is to stop guests from looking in because I thought it might be nice for them to have like clear viewing areas and also to provide some barrier between the leopards and the guests because I think they might be quite shy animals as well so they probably just need that little bit of space to hide from the guests in case they get a little bit too shy they just need to like hide behind a rock or a barrier or something like that so yeah like I said that the leopards couldn't jump up to that section because I placed so many rocks there so in the end yeah I basically put like a really really low barrier and then I double it up with a second barrier I think it was like 
the barbed wire fence or something like that that I use um, and that you see in quite a lot of zoos that sort of technique of creating two barriers just to make the guests step back it might be so that they can't you know put their hands through the barrier or it might be so that they don't drop th food through I guess or just to keep them at a safe distance from the animals or maybe to keep them a distance that the animal is comfortable with something like that yeah so I thought that was quite a nice little detail so that's why I did that um, and I tried to make the rest of the build like all around the path and everything like that as pretty as possible so I basically just place a load of rocks and you know add a vegetation sections or planter box sections I basically use the same plants over and over again I think they are like I don't know what they're called but they're the tropical plants that you get in the aquatic pack I use them a lot and then I'm pretty sure one of the other kind of big leafy palm type plants is from base game and then on the interior of that building I think I used those purple plants that came with the South American pack I want to say quite a lot and they're really really pretty I like those purple ones I should have used them more on the inside of the habitat but I think actually because they're South American maybe they weren't part of that bio maybe that's why I didn't use them but yeah with the South East Asian pack we also got an update for billboards in game I believe I can't remember if that was a base game update or if it came with the pack but we basically got a load of different sized screens so previously we only had that one education board screen size and now we can put all kinds of education information on those different types of boards which was really really handy so in the interior of that viewing gallery I add like I say I sort of custom built education billboard for the clouded leopards and it's I do, I, I know you can upload pictures and I'm not quite sure how that works yet so I didn't do that just this time I just created one with shapes and like fake writing like I said <laughs> for like an extra bit of information but then I did also include some extra small billboard shapes for like the general education signs I think they're like the same ones that we used to get that one object that had rather than like the animal or habitat education it was like the general education boards that we had so I just put some of those on the on the sign but yeah I'm not quite sure how it works to add those personalized education boards how that works like to add an image to them whether you have to like create the design of that image yourself or whether you can type text or something like that I haven't actually had a proper look yet I think you might have to create the entire image from scratch but if you guys know let me know down in the comments because it might be like an easy thing or maybe loads of people have added something to um, blueprints or something like that that'd be quite nice if they've done their own designs and added them to the workshop I did also create a little keeper hat and like a staff room as well and I added them like with a really really simplistic exterior design I was really really excited to create this habitat for you guys to create this build and so I just wanted to get it done and by the time that I finished everything else I was like oh I just really want to edit this and make sure that the video gets up because I want people to see it so yeah I wasn't too excited about doing the backstage areas so it's kept quite simple so I'm sorry about that but in my sandbox mode zoos I'll make sure that I put in a fair bit of effort to make the backstage areas look as good as the stuff that the guests can see so yeah it's just round the back and it's just like really really basic the roof is like a bit dodgy <laughs> But it doesn't look too bad. I do put some vegetation around there. It looks okay. But it's there if you need it. If you want to download this build, then it has got those facilities back there. So <laughs> there is that. And like I say, I have got two sandbox mode zoos on the go on my channel currently. So if you're interested in checking them out, I'll link the playlist for them in the description box below. One of them is an African grassland zoo called Anami Zoo. I've only just started that one. I've just done the entrance. 
but that's going to have your standard popular African animals in it. So I'm really, really excited for that, but that's because that's going to have some quite exciting animals in that. And the design of the architecture is going to be quite contemporary um, and sleek looking. Yeah, so most of the buildings are kind of white and sleek or like a really pretty timber colour using those recolourable walls and shapes from the aquatic pack. So yeah, I'm really excited for the look of that one. And then the other zoo I've got on the go is a Canadian animal park. So so yeah, that's going to have as many North American animals that I can find. We don't actually have that many in game, but that's going to be quite naturalistic, quite traditional as well. So Canadian lodge style buildings, architecture and the landscape as well is going to be based around the mountains and all of the animals enclosures are going to be quite big and spacious and it's more like a natural animal park than a zoo per se. So yeah, those are the two some box mode zoos that I've got on the go at the minute. I'll probably add more in time. I'm kind of hoping to eventually start a franchise mode zoo on the channel. I really want to do like a European, not like low budget zoo, but maybe more of a realistic style of zoo that you actually might encounter at least if you're from where i am from like the kind of zoos that i am used to seeing in the uk base it on that maybe and also the types of animals that would be included in that would be it would make sense for them to be more of a variety so it's not based on biome it's just a zoo that incorporates all kinds of animals and maybe the types of architecture and habitats you know, the themes would change depending on what the animal was rather than the area that the zoo's in, if that makes sense. It might be more flexible in that style. That's kind of what I was thinking about doing. So let me know what you think of that down in the comments below. But yeah, if I do add a franchise mode zoo, I will probably wait until maybe my sims series is over my animal rescue let's play that i've got on the go although saying that i have a feeling and i'm really excited if this is the case that there will be a farm expansion pack coming to the sims 4 soon i think it's going to come this summer um, they've kind of hinted at it for a long time now and from the hints that we've been given about this summer's expansion pack it pretty much sounds like it's going to be a farming pack so if that is the case i plan on making a sims 4 farming let's play and hopefully i'll be done with my animal rescue let's play by then because i don't want to be making two at once because that would be really really hard work on me so yeah i'll try and get that animal rescue one out as soon as possible but if not then i'll just sort of release them when i can but yeah i'll probably maybe wait until those let's plays are out of the way and then i will start franchise mode zoo because because I feel like builds are more popular. Build videos or habitat build videos are more popular on YouTube. They just do better because people search for individual habitats rather than like a general franchise mode video. So yeah, that's why I'm sort of putting it off. And it's the same thing for Sims Let's Plays as well. So not very many people, well, I don't know, maybe I think I like to watch Let's Plays and I always search for them but I think build videos are much more popular because they're much more searchable on YouTube, I think. Yeah, they suit the way that we search for videos a lot better, I think. So I don't wanna have too many like let's play type videos on my channel on the go at once. I think I'll just sort of try and have, if possible, just one on the go at once. So I'll wait off if that's the case until those are over and then I'll start a franchise mode soon. But I'll keep planning for it. I've got loads of reference pictures for it already like i've got a whole document full of planet zoo reference pictures and sims 4 reference pictures as well for builds that i want to create so i'll just keep adding to it so it'll be by the time that we get there it'll be an amazing zoo hopefully <laughs> oh also i've just been looking at me building the interior of that viewing building and i just remembered that i can't work out how to get the lights to work in Planet Zoo. Do they just not work or do I have to wait until it gets dark? Do they not work until it gets dark or something like that? Or is there a setting that I can turn on that makes the lights work? So I just suddenly realized that, yeah, like the lights weren't actually on 
and it makes the screenshots and stuff that I take look really really ugly when they're off and I kind of want the screenshots um, to look much nicer of the interiors of my build so if you know how to turn that on or make that work will you just let me know down in the comments because I'm a bit of an idiot but I will have a look if if not but yeah if you do know just let me know but anyway we're coming up to the end of the video now so I really really hope you liked it I was really really excited with this one I was so excited to share it with you and to get it edited and get the voiceover done because yeah I was just really happy to get into Planet Zoo again and I was just feeling really inspired from the new pack with this enclosure so I hope you like it like I say the blueprints are in the description box below if you want to check them out the links are there let me know what you think down in the comments below if you like the video please like comment and subscribe thank you so much for watching I'll see you next time bye guys